Welcome back. So, we saw how we can put our wireless card in monitor mode, but right now, let's get to the real attack. So, the steps go like this. We want to put our card in monitor mode. We didn't want to sniff all of the information around us. Then, out of all of the wireless access points, we must pick the one that we want to attack. And in this video, I will be attacking my own wireless access point because attacking anyone else's would be illegal. So, we will be attacking my access point. You can attack yours if you are still following this section. And once we choose our target, we need to check out the channel on which the target is running on and the MAC address which the target access point has. Then we must run our sniffing program and simultaneously while running that sniffing program, we must run our deauthentication attack. Then we can deauthenticate the devices on that access point for a few seconds and once we stop the authenticating we should be able to sniff the four-way handshake with the hashed value of the password. Then we can move on to the Cal Linux machine and there we're going to try to crack that password. Okay, there are a lot of steps in front of us so let's get straight into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my wireless card in monitor mode as I did in the previous video. Nothing really to explain too much here. And the next command that I want to run right after it is airmon-ng check wlo1, which is my wireless interface. Now this program is something that you have inside of your Cal Linux machine, so you shouldn't have problem running this. The wireless interface is something that you want to change to the name of your wireless interface, and once you set the entire command, you can click enter. It will tell you that it found five processes that could cause some trouble. Now this means that if we run into any problems during our process of gathering the four-way handshake with the password, it could be due to these processes still running. So we're just not going to risk that and we're going to kill all of those processes straight away. How can we do that? Well, we can type airmon dash ng and then check and then kill. Once you type this, press enter. It will also tell you that it found five processes, but down here it will also tell you that it is killing all those processes. So now we shouldn't have any problem running our other tools. Once you do that, what you want to check is whether your wireless card is still in monitor mode and since it sometimes turns back to manage mode, you must put it once again into the monitor mode after performing the airmon-ng command. After you put it back to monitor mode, the next command that we want to run is aerodump-ng and then the interface that is currently in the monitor mode. Since WLO1 is inside of the monitor mode for me, I will press enter right here and this will start sniffing all of the information around me. Let me enlarge this terminal and we're going to be able to see all of the wireless access points that are around me. These are the names of the wireless access points under the column E SSID. The authentication and the cipher and the encryption is type of the protection that the wireless access point has, so you can see most of them will have WPA2, which is currently the highest protection they can possibly get. CH right here is something that we want to remember because this ch column is actually the channel and you remember channel is one of the two things that we must need in order to perform this attack. The data can tell us if the access point is active currently or if it has some devices connected to it that are browsing the internet. While the beacons would usually tell us the same thing, however the PWR right here can tell us how far away is the access point. So the lower the number, the closer the access point is to you. And sometimes if you choose an access point that is far, far away, this attack might not work. You have to be really close to the target in order for this to work. However, you do not have to be connected to the target. As you can see right now, I have no access to the internet, I am not connected to any access point, and I will be targeting this access point right here, called Takmichar. This is my wireless access point, therefore I will be targeting that one. Now. Remember that we need to remember two things. 
so the channel for my axis point is 2. And by the way, once you choose your target, feel free to control C this, because sometimes this screen knows to move, and you cannot really copy and paste different things that you need. So I have chosen this target right here, and I need to remember the channel, which is 2, and the MAC address. Now the channel is easy to remember, so therefore I'm just going to copy the MAC address right here, and then we need to start the sniffing process again, however, we're going to write information inside of a file. For this, we're only going to sniff one access point information, and to do that, we must specify the channel and the MAC address. So we start the command the same, with arrow dump dash ng, then we use dash c command for the channel, and we specify the channel number. In my case, that is 2. And arrow dump is also a program that you have pre installed in Cal Linux, so all of these programs that we use you will already have in your Cal Linux machine. If you don't, or if you're using some other machine to perform this, I will link in the resources how you can download all of these tools. It is pretty simple, so you shouldn't have any problem downloading them. Nonetheless, let's get back to our command. So we got arrow dump dash ng, then dash c for the channel. We specify channel number two. For you, it might be different channel. And after that, we use dash dash bssid. And what bssid is, is simply the MAC address. Since we can see that the column where MAC addresses are is called bssid. So after this, we must paste our MAC address to our target wireless access point. And the last parameter to this command is going to be dash w option. And this dash w option simply stands for the file name that we're going to write all of this in. So let's call this the wireless access point name in capital underscore test. This is going to be our file name. And by the way, also once running this command, remember in which destination are you running the command, because that is where it's going to save your files. I'm saving this as stockmichar underscore test. And the last thing that we must specify is the wireless interface, which is currently in monitor mode. For me, that is WL01. You specify your wireless interface in monitor mode, and once you craft this tar command, you can press enter. And you will notice right here, it will only sniff for this specific wireless access point. We can see the name right here under the ESID, and we can see its MAC address. What also we can see are the devices that are currently connected to this access point. And at the moment, it only has two of them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the wireless access point over my mobile phone. And you can see that we already managed to capture the WPA handshake, which is all that we need in order to be able to crack the password. However, we're going to try to do that again, just by performing the deauthentication attack. Because we can't really wait for someone to randomly connect to our access point, we must disconnect everyone from the access point. And to do that, I'm going to enter the root terminal. And I will enlarge this, of course, so you can see everything better. And the command that we must use to actually deauthenticate someone is using the airplay-ng tool. So it is spelled like this. And the options that it takes is dash zero and then space and zero once again. This means it will send the authentication packets indefinitely until we control C the program and then it will stop the authenticating. So what I advise you to do if you're following this attack is connect your mobile phone to the access point and you will notice as soon as we start running this command, your mobile phone will get disconnected from that wireless access point. So once you type dash zero and then zero, the next parameter is dash a and after dash a comes the MAC address of the wireless access point. At the end, we only specify the wireless interface in the monitor mode and we can start the authenticating. And if I take a look at my phone, I am instantly being disconnected from this wireless access point. And if I go to settings and try to connect back, it will not work nobody will be able to connect to this wireless access point as long as I am running this attack. But you only want to run this for a few seconds. And once you run it for a few seconds, everyone will be disconnected. Then you control C. 
And here, in just a few seconds, we will be catching WPA2 handshakes with the hashed value of the password. From my phone, I already established connection to the wireless access point, and once you do that, in the upper right corner, you should see this WPA handshake, and as soon as you see that, you can control C this program. You got everything that you need. You got the four-way handshake, and inside of that four-way handshake is the password that you need. Once you finish all of this, you will notice that you got four different files on your desktop. As you can see, one, two, three, and four. And you actually only need one out of these four files, and this is the .cap file. All of the other three you don't need for this attack, so you can just save the .cap file and you can delete the others. Once you have the .cap file, inside of this file is our four-way handshake, and then in the next video we're going to use different tools to extract the hash password from this .cap file, and then we're going to use massive word lists to try to crack this password from this file. But for this I'm going to switch to my Cal Linux machine, so we can go back to our normal environment since I no longer need to run any program on my laptop. See you in the next video.